sisters I hope this day finds you well I want to show you something and I want you to really listen and really pay attention because this is coming from 1969 this is going to be G Edward Griffin and he's going to be discussing the communist strategy I want you to watch and listen and then look at the world around you today and then you tell me you tell me if there's any similarities if you believe that he's completely off base, if you believe that he's just a conspiracy theorist, you tell me. Okay, let's, let's watch this together. And I want you to really listen, really with an open mind. This transcends ideological differences and party lines. That's all just a strategy to divide and conquer us. You understand that? Because we're all Americans. So any label that divides us is done on purpose to ding, 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 divide us. It doesn't matter if you're Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, left, right. None of that stuff matters when you get to the heart of it. The heart of it is that there is truth. And truth is what unifies us. Not subjective truth, but objective truth. And the truth is when you are being attacked, you only have three choices. You can run and hide. You can submit or you can fight back. That's just the truth of it. And in that scenario, it's not going to matter what political aisle you, you sit on. It's not gonna matter if you believe in the welfare state or if you don't, it, none of that stuff is gonna matter when crap hits the fan and reality comes and slaps you in the face. And this right here, I believe is a dose of reality. When I watch it, I'm looking at a prophet. I want you to tell me, if you're seeing what I'm seeing, am I crazy? Right? I want you to determine using your own mind. Okay, because I actually still respect you. I respect you as an equal. Whereas there's a side that doesn't. And you can tell by the way that they speak to you. You can tell by the policies that they implement. You can tell by, by the way that they use force and call it for the greater good. Understand that anybody who uses force preemptively uses force to change your life and impose their will. They're not the good guy ever, like ever. Anyway, let's jump into this. Check it out. As early as 1928, the communists declared that the racial differences among our people constituted the weakest and most vulnerable point in our social fabric. By constantly probing and straining at this one spot, they calculated that eventually the cloth could be torn apart and that Americans could be divided, weakened, and perhaps even set against each other in open combat. I want you to understand, this is 1969 that this man is saying this. Do you understand? This is what the communist strategy was then. This is what it was then. And if you look around today, you tell me, is, has it changed? Has the strategy changed? They've been implementing it this whole time. Has, has the strategy changed? We mustn't kid ourselves into thinking that the communists have placed their agitators only into the black communities. They're working both sides of the street. They want hatred, violence, and bloodshed between the races, and they don't care how they get it or whom they use. Even you tell me, because he's what, what he's spelling out right now, you could literally, he could be saying this today, and it would actually be even more impactful because it's so overt now and children if necessary. Here is a book that I think ought to be in every home library. It's entitled Color, Communism, and Common Sense by Manning Johnson. He joined the party as a young man because he honestly believed that the communists were trying to improve the conditions of his people. He was a dedicated communist and eventually he rose to one of the highest ranks. But after many years he discovered that instead they were merely planning to use his people in a bloody revolution to destroy America. And when he woke up to this, he dropped out of the party and devoted the rest of his life trying to alert his fellow citizens of all races to the true nature of the Communist Party as he knew it to be from the inside. Manning now understand, the only thing that's, that's really changed is that they've added in more categories. 
So now there's class, which Marx really, really loved. His whole thing was about class. But when you have the most racially diverse country in, in all of human history, you can use that strength because being diverse is a strength. You can use that strength against that country. So then they move to race. Now they've just added more categories. Now they've added LGBTQ as another category. You see, like they're just expanding on their same strategy, but the, the overall goal and the underlining, like the meat of that strategy hasn't actually changed at all. Johnson said, black rebellion was what Moscow wanted. Bloody racial conflict would split America. During the confusion, demoralization and panic would set in. Then finally the Reds say, workers stop work. Many of them seize arms by attacking arsenals. Street fights become frequent. Under the leadership of the Communist Party, the workers organize revolutionary committees to be in command of the uprising. Armed workers seize the principal government offices, invade the residences of the president and his cabinet members, arrest them, declare the old regime abolished, establish their own power. Now, here is a piece of vicious communist propaganda that perhaps some of you have seen. It's called... Now, I understand that what he's talking about, you know, then, you know, they probably thought he was crazy, probably said he was crazy. Today... People will say, well, like, well, he sounds radical and extreme. Really? Were you were you not around for the for the riots in summer of 2020? Did you not see that uprising? The actual insurrection? Did you not actually see that? Cities burning? Police officers getting run over by cars and hit with bricks and bats? People getting murdered in the streets? Small businesses, not large corporations, small businesses getting smashed and broken into on a regular basis. And the leadership that was tasked to actually protect the community just sat on the sidelines, completely neutered. So yes, it's not Moscow now. It's actually worse because they've infiltrated every level of our government and they want to bring about this communist regime. I mean, what else could it be? You're looking, you're looking at the results of socialism and how it's infected every major institution of our country. And you look at the inefficacy and the ineptitude and the negligence in every, in every major institution of our country, from the Department of Labor to the Department of Education to the, to, to the IRS, to the Federal Reserve, which isn't actually a government, you know, <laughs> own building, even they call it federal, right? I always say this, what sense does it make to have 300 million people share the same wallet? That's absolutely idiotic. They've been slowly pushing and inching us towards socialism and ultimately communism. And now they've just ramped it up. So I just, I find this just so impactful to listen to this man speak today, even though he's saying this in 1969, he's giving you their blueprint. Called The Crusader. It's written by Robert F. Williams one of the organizers of the Revolutionary Action Movement. In this issue of the Crusader, the communists call not only for extensive chaos within the cities, but for putting to the torch every village, every forest, every field, and every barn. The plan is for raging fires from one city to the next. The reason? Well, first, there's the value of sheer destruction. Secondly, it would force us to deploy our defenses and rescue units over the widest possible area. The communists point out that as long as our police and National Guard remain concentrated, they're invincible. So under, understand that they had, to, they had to alter some of their plans in order to reach this goal. They, they realized that they weren't going to be able to really put boots on the ground here. We're, we're, we're still well armed and we're still, we got that, that, that liberty running through our, our, our veins. That's not going to work. Right. So what did they do? They used climate alarmism to to help to basically like be a cancer on our infrastructure and start and start to ruin us. So they use climate alarmism to get you to make decisions to where you start to kill your own food. They try to push you to, to this transhumanist, you know, synthetic artificial stuff like it's going to be better than what's real. They get you to basically castrate forestry where it's most needed. So then there's, there's a multitude of forest fires 
at an unprecedented level, burning hotter than they ever burned before. And then they use that, the result of their policies to say, see, we were right. It is, this is due to climate change. No, you use climate alarmism to take control and then your policies, your decision-making, your leadership is what, is what caused all of these things. It wasn't climate change. Do, do you see how that works? So they use climate alarmism and then they use this pandemic that just passed the same way. Whenever there's a tragedy, it always ends up with them getting more power. And when I say them, I'm talking about the people who fundamentally want to destroy America, the people who hate the Constitution and they hate for the people by the people, which means that they actually hate you. But if they can be forced to spread out over the entire city and into the countryside as well, then they can be picked off from ambush one by one. And the third value of massive fire to the communists is psychological. The average American, they say, soft and decadent, when he sees billows of black smoke rising from one horizon to the other, when at night the only light he has to see by is the flickering red from flames leaping into the sky, he'll become paralyzed with fear and panic. He'll run away and hide and do nothing to interfere with the guerrilla bands as they strike at the community's power centers. The Crusader explains how to set up sniper units in crowded metropolitan areas, how to manufacture jumbo Molotov cocktails, the gallon jug size, and how to mix the gasoline with certain ingredients to make it burn like napalm, how to pour gasoline into utility manholes in the streets to set fire to the main telephone cables, how to put sulfur tips from matches into air conditioning units and blow up large buildings. I want you to understand that this was their strategy then. Now, before they had the technology that we have today, the technological advances, so understand these people have not gone away. That's, that's what I want to bring to your attention as you're listening to this. This is what I keep trying to drive home. They haven't gone away. They're still here. They still want the same things. And you can see the results of their strategies around you every day. You can see it. We are in a recession. That is a fact. A man cannot be a woman. That is a fact. A woman cannot be a man. That is a fact. You can't even say what's real anymore without being vilified. You can't speak the truth without being censored or out and out, you know, kicked off of any platform that would give you any type of reach at all. Do, do you see how, like, from language to the economy, both foreign and our domestic policies, everything is inching us towards this collapse. And it's all been designed. And that's why I wanted to show you that, that this goes way back. This is way deeper. This isn't something that, that just sprung up. I say it goes back as far as even the abolitionist movement and the start of the demolition party, which I believe was the, was the, the very first strategy to divide and conquer, was to even create the demolition party. I think that was the, that was the first step. And it was all like the brainchild of, of people, of these same the same pathological behavior of people who want to can hold on to the power that they had and hold on to the control and influence that they had. These are going to be the top one percenters of the day, not the ones who had plantations that were owned by the, by the bank, not the ones who had smaller plantations with a few slaves. I'm talking about the Bill Gates of those times. I'm talking about the, the Klaus Schwabs of those times, the Jeff Bezos of those times, the George Soros of those times who had large plantations. They didn't want to let that go. Research it. I'm telling you, it'll blow your mind when you start to realize that even the racial aspect of slavery was created as a strategic plot, as a political strategic plot to push back against the abolitionist movement. Racism was never an aspect of slavery. People tend to enslave their own. Race was never an aspect of it. Never an aspect of it. Even when they first bought black slaves here, it still wasn't an aspect of it. It was more about class. And that's what slavery has always been about, is class. They added that aspect in order, as I said, research, research it yourself. It'll blow your mind. So all this racism stuff today, that was all just a part of that strategy. It's all part of the plot. And look how long it's lasted, right? How to ignite gas mains and oil storage tanks. It explains how radio-controlled model airplanes can be used to fly explosive charges over heavily guarded fences into gasoline storage areas or munition stockpiles. So here's, here's a great example. They were talking about using model airplanes then. 
Think about what the drones can do today. Do you see what I'm saying? The strategy is there, but the, the technology has allowed for some different modifications, <laughs> dare I say, make them even more effective. It even calls for infiltration into the National Guard units, revolutionaries posing as non-militants for the purpose of getting free military training and for gaining access to critical military supplies and heavy weapons. And then, finally, Robert Williams says this. Any all-out minority revolution must create a state of crisis wherein almost all of the male population would be forced to remain in their homes to protect their property and families. The middle class is very large, but it is not accustomed to deprivation and terror. Because of its affluence, it has waxed soft. It has no stomach for massive fire, blood, and violence. The motive force behind its life drive is its endless pursuit of prestige, conspicuous consumption, and sensual pleasure. In other words, we've gotten comfortable and we're willing to trade our liberties, trade what we know to be true, in order to maintain that level of comfort. Is he lying? Like you see what's happening today. Right. Like they got like like educated, college educated folks saying that, yes, I believe a man can have a baby. We have a Supreme Court justice going through her 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 nomination or her what's the word for it, going through her her qualification process in Kentaji Brown Jackson in order to be appointed. And she says that she can't define what a woman is because she's not a biologist. That's a perfect example of somebody compromising their character and their intelligence just to gain power and to keep her comfortable life. Because you can't tell me that, that all of a sudden this learned, very educated, highly educated woman, very accomplished woman, all of a sudden doesn't know how to define a woman without a biology degree. So what he's saying is that soft times create soft people. And those soft people are like clay are easy to mold and manipulate. Even when they know what the truth is, they will sacrifice that. They will sacrifice their, their souls in order to maintain that comfort. A few years of violent, sporadic, and highly destructive uprisings will set the stage for the grand finale. After the stage is properly set through protracted struggle, America could be brought to her knees in 90 days of highly organized, fierce fighting, sabotage, and massive firestorm. Ladies and gentlemen, the plans and preparations for a communist revolution of force and violence are far advanced. The organization behind these preparations has almost unlimited financial resources, and it provides both training and leadership based upon years of experience in many other countries. Now, if you think that's crazy, Go look at Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum and look at look at their organization. I can't remember the exact name of it. It's like it's for like young leaders. Look who's been a part of that. They they train these folks and then they send them out into world governments to infiltrate. Gavin Newsom, Justin Trudeau, like look at the connection with Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum. And they're like I said, I can't remember the name of it, but it's like this young leaders thing where they they get them in there. They program them. <laughs> and then they send them out. So, like I'm saying, what he's saying is, is prophetic. Our enemies are deadly serious about their task. And it's nothing short of national suicide for us to continue to ignore their plans and their progress. The violent revolution becomes of primary value to the communists to the extent to which it can be used to condition the masses psychologically to accept the nonviolent revolution which is offered supposedly as the only alternative. Hoping to avoid further violence and bloodshed, the public is to be pressured into accepting measures that will move the country gradually and legally toward communism. Now, he should just drop the mic after that. This is one of the reasons why they, they, wait, into, they wait until they get a mass shooting that fits their narrative, because it's not every mass shooting. They wait until they get a mass shooting that fits their narrative, and then they try to use that to undermine your ability to defend yourself so they can take away your guns. 
So that's just one great example. But what he's saying is they make everything so raw, you know, so violent and you have like riots and, and all of these smash and grabs. You look what's happening in San Francisco. You look what's happening in New York, Baltimore. You look at the rise in crime. You look at Chicago. This is all done by design, according to him, to get people to basically accept that, that path that, that, that appears to be safer. Even if that path is a pathway to slavery, they'll accept it because they want the violence to stop. You understand that's what an abuser does. That's, that's torture, psychological and physical torture, where they, they, they keep putting pressure and stress on you, using force, and they break you. They get you to basically accept whatever it is that they say in order to have that pain stop or to have that assault stop. And that's basically what he's saying. And like I said, look around you today. Tell me you don't see similarities in what he's saying and what's happening. And this has happened in 1969. This Literally, this is when a lot of this stuff started to get ramped up. And we're seeing right now is the culmination of, of the last like 60 to 70 years. We're seeing, we're seeing the, the fruits of that are happening now where you have the demolition party going after guns again trying to use climate alarmism to push their, their green this and green that, even though they know it, it, it can't meet the demand, even though they know that it causes more harm than good, even though they know it causes waste and everything. They, they don't want you to talk, they don't want to talk about that. They want to push that. And they want to, you know, look, look what they just did with this, with this spending. They want a private military force, a federal, a federal policing force, excuse me, not military, a federal policing force, they couldn't do it quickly enough using climate alarmism and using using defund the police and all that kind of stuff because that's what that's what it was for so they go you know what we already have the irs let's just make them an army and understand this is an army that can freeze your assets that can take money out of your bank account they can freeze your assets take your property and take money out of out of your bank account Mission accomplished. Look at what they're doing now. Look at how they're destroying supply chains. They're 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 destroying you know, our in, energy and uh, independence or or our move towards energy independence from the from the previous administration. Why would they reverse all that? Why would you want to be dependent upon other countries who have not shown to be down for you? That makes no sense. That's like a recipe for disaster, right? It was all done by design. And that's, and that's all I really want you to see is that if this guy predicted it in 1969, and it wasn't even, this isn't even a prediction. This is actually what the communist strategy was. And I, and I say still is. So this isn't a prediction, actually. So me saying that he's a prophet, actually, let me take that back. He's just reading off what the communist strategy is. And what I'm telling you is that that strategy has not changed. But without calling it that, the strategy of the proletarian revolution calls for the quiet conversion of our government into a communist regime, but under the banner of socialism. Well, what is socialism? All right, let's define it. Yes, let's define it. Think about how many children are coming out of college believing that socialism is the way to go, and you tell me that, that they weren't brainwashed. You tell me that, that socialism, which has never worked in the history of man and has caused more tragedy and more death and when I say socialism, communism, and Marxism, they're all the same to me. It's caused more human death than anything else. Why any person coming out of what's supposed to be higher learning, coming out of that, is supposed to have graduated with a bachelor's and sometimes higher if they're, you know, if they're going back to post-grad work, how they could come out thinking that socialism is what America should be if that wasn't brainwashing. Because it so counters the truth it doesn't make any sense. The only thing that would make sense is that it is brainwashing because nobody in their right mind, nobody in their right mind would want socialism. Nobody would. Nobody in their right mind would want socialism. Now you can have people that have big hearts and, and they talk about, well, you know, people should all have healthcare and people should all be able to do this and be like, yeah, yeah, I, I, me too. I believe we should have world peace. I, I wish everybody had, re you know, had food to eat and, and had medical attention and all that, yes. But that's how a child believes. You understand, this stuff costs money. 
that this stuff, you, you have, you can't just receive something and then believe that, that you deserve it because you exist. The only thing that all of us deserves is an equal shot. That's it. And socialism does not give everybody an equal shot at all. It actually undermines equality. It undermines egalitarianism. While trying to say that it's for egalitarian, it doesn't. Because socialism cannot function without robbing Peter to pay Paul. There's no aspect of socialism that can work without robbing Peter to pay Paul. And what these people want you to do is they want you, they try to attack you emotionally and say, well, if you had a good heart, you wouldn't mind being robbed from. You wouldn't mind me stealing and taking your property and taking your intellectual property and, and, and taking your labor and benefiting somebody else with it. No, that makes you evil. That makes you a thief. That makes you a criminal. That makes you a bully. But you see how they twist it? No, socialism is an ideology for losers. Because only a loser would want to take from somebody else what they've earned and not want to earn it themselves. According to the dictionary, socialism is a political concept based upon the principle of government ownership and control of property, the means of production, and the avenues of commerce. Under socialism, those who run the government, and the communists are confident that in America they eventually will be the ones who do so, those who run the government will know who is to get something and who has to wait. And now I want you to understand, these people who are controlling all of this stuff, as he just defined socialism, they're not producing anything. They're sitting at the top and they, they get to say all the stuff that's actually getting produced by these people down here, they're the ones who, gets, who get to say where that goes, to whom and, and for how much and, and how much of it. D does, that, does that sound like equality to you? That, does it? That's what I'm saying. If you want socialism, you've been brainwashed. You've been brainwashed. And I, and I would say this, if you want to start your own commune and you get people together who want to agree, fine, but you're not going to come take my intellectual property. You're not going to come benefit from my labor. And you and you're, and you're just sitting back at home with your feet kicked up watching, you know, big bang theory. You're not going to come take from me and then want me to be okay with it. And then try to say, there's something wrong with me. If I don't want to be robbed from <laughs> that represents control over human beings. What has all this to do with the communist revolution in America? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has everything to do with it because the building of socialism is the communist revolution in America. It represents the process whereby our country can be moved gradually toward communism without the people even being aware of it. No matter what grievance we may have, real or imagined, no matter what national problems we may face, the communists seize upon these as excuses to build socialism. They have one and only one solution for all problems. More government, more government, and then more and more until it's total government. And forgive me for saying it one more time. Total government is communism. Now you can't tell me that what he's saying isn't absolutely 100% true after every tragedy, whether manufactured or circumstantial, their solution is always more government. And they've been using socialism to, as he said, slowly push us over that edge into the communist pit of hell. Everything wrong with this country today has been infected by socialism. Every major institution, from law enforcement to the institutions that are supposed to be for our welfare, they've all been infected with socialism. Medicare, Medicaid, Department of Education, Department of Labor, Department of Agriculture, Department of Health, all of them, IRS, our progressive tax structure is socialist. Every aspect of it, it's not free market. It's not free market at all. You wanna cure most of our ills, or most of our ills, you do two things. One, you get back to supporting the nuclear family. As, as a society, we support the nuclear family. And then two, you go back to free market. Free market is self-corrective. 
and the family will, will, will handle our moral compass and get us back on track. That's it. 99% of our problems go away. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me know if you agree, if you disagree. I'm always open to, to a conversation. Just know that only truth will change my mind. And know that uh, insults are not an argument. Profanity is not an argument. Facts and truth are how you support an argument. If you want to have a debate, I'm open. I'm, I'm definitely open to it. But understand, if you're not coming with the facts, I'm going to crush you. You're, gonna, like, you're just going to end up unfriending me or, or blocking me or calling me names. That's, that's where you're going to end up. And I'm just going to smile and, and wish, you to ha- wish you a good day. <laughs> Because they want you in the dark. And I'm over here trying to help you turn on that light. You guys be well.